Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, how are you today? How's your Friday doing so far? Uh, Maria is going to be just listening today. Okay, I got to say Guadalupe, Vidal, Aymara, and Emerson. Thank you so much for being on time. I hope that you are having a good Friday so far. We're going to start today's section uh, with a review. Let me share a screen with you. Are you ready? Are you still driving? Are you having dinner? Are you at home? I don't see... Uh, I don't see anybody with camera on. Nobody says anything. So let me know if you're ready. It seems like only Alexandra is ready. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Martiel. Uh, I'm ready today. Ready. That's yeah. nice to hear that. Okay, so we're going to start with that review for um, yesterday. We were uh, using enough and uh, I see that some of you are making a good use of it. Some of you still need maybe a couple of more exercises in a short review. So we're going to start with enough. Uh, enough is like, uh, como decir, suficientemente, you know, it's like lo, lo justo, right? Um, Y si es negativo, es como no es suficientemente tal cosa. Entonces, tenemos enough con adjetivos y con nouns. Se usa diferente dependiendo de qué sea lo que estamos, eh, con qué lo estamos combinando o utilizando. Si va a ser un adjetivo, el adjetivo va a ir antes. ¿Ok? Eh, si es con un noun, el, el noun va después de la palabra enough. Okay. Vamos a hacer un par de ejemplos. Okay, I'm going to write a word and you tell. Efficient. Efficient is a noun or is an adjective? Adjective. Es an adjective, ajá. Los adjetivos son los que describen, son este una cualidad, algo que describe a alguna persona, algún animal, alguna cosa. Entonces, efficient es un adjetivo. Eh, ¿Cómo podemos hablar? Eh, eficiencia podría ser de un carro, podría ser. Entonces, si decimos... Um, uh, Mi carro es uh, suficiente, eh, es eficiente lo suficientemente, ok, como redundante. Pero, ¿cómo nos quedaría la oración? My car is efficient enough. Ajá, uh -huh. efficient enough. Ok, my car is efficient enough. Primero ponemos el adjetivo y luego um, 
la palabra enough. Si fuera negativa la oración, solo le agregamos not ahí. Es not efficient enough. Okay. ok, what is features? La palabra feature es um, un adjetivo o es un noun? Uh, did it? Mm, it's noun. noun. It's noun. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, y si yo digo que eh, el, um, no sé, pensar, decir, eh, el iPhone no tiene suficientes características por decir algo. ¿Cómo me quedaría? La oración. iPhone. No tiene suficientes características para mí, que no lo exploro quizás. Uh, iPhone. Eh, negativo. Uh, si digo no tiene. Ajá. Doesn't. Tendría que doesn't have. Ahora escribo y no. Features. Y luego features, el noun features. Ok. ¿Estamos bien hasta aquí con el no? Hacemos más ejercicios. One more. Ok. Let's see. The word organize is the noun or is an adjective? Organize. Adjective. It's an adjective. Uh huh. It's an adjective. ¿Cómo podríamos decir mi, mi, mi horario, mi itinerario está suficientemente organizado? My, my schedule. Uh, my schedule. It's... Organize enough. Excellent. Organize enough. Right? <laughs> enough. It's organized enough. My schedule is organized enough. Mm -hmm. Está lo justo. Está bien organizado. That's okay. Si fuera negativo, como tengo el verbo to be ahí, cuando estamos con cero estar, solo agregamos not. ¿Verdad? Si estamos con otro verbo que no es cero estar, entonces la negativa va con el doesn't. Uh -huh. My schedule is not organized enough. <ríe> Necesita un poco más. Um, vamos a ver otra palabra. A ver. Vamos a ver. Pensemos. Attractive. Is it a noun or an adjective? Adjective. Adjective, yes. Mm -hmm. So, si yo digo el precio, el precio no es suficientemente atractivo. <laughs> Estoy viendo algo y el precio no me parece suficientemente atractivo como para invertir. The price is not attractive enough. Excellent. The price, the price is not attractive enough. The price is not attractive enough. Uh, 
Ahora, um, veamos, digo, hay, uh, ok, room, room is a, uh, it's a noun or it's an adjective, room. Noun. Noun. Noun, ajá, es un noun. Entonces, noun, eh, room, puede ser una habitación, pero también puede significar espacio. Uh -huh. eh, si digo, um, de repente, sí, hay suficiente espacio eh, para todos. Hay. Ok. Si digo, hay. There, there is. Excellent. There is. Suficiente espacio. Enough room. Ajá, enough room. Ajá, como estamos usando un noun, vamos a escribir primero enough y después el noun. Okay. Enough room for everybody. For everybody in the party. <laughs> for everybody. There is enough room for everybody. Hay suficiente espacio para todos. Okay? There is enough room for everybody. So, esto es lo único que hay que tener eh, en cuenta, ¿verdad? Si va a ser un noun, como por ejemplo el último que hicimos, vamos a poner primero enough y luego el noun. Enough room en este caso. Um, si es un adjetivo, primero va a ir el adjetivo y después enough. Eh, igual, ¿verdad? Si es para hacer una oración negativa, si tenemos por ahí el verbo be, la negativa sería usando not. Si tenemos otro verbo que no sea ser o estar y queremos hacer en negativo con enough, entonces usamos el auxiliar don't or doesn't, dependiendo de la persona. Don't or doesn't. ¿Ok? ¿Estamos bien hasta acá? ¿Y quedó más claro? Yes, I get it. Ok, good. Um, a ver, ¿qué más teníamos? Eso era con respecto a enough, que acá lo tenemos. Enough con adjectives, enough con nouns. Ok. Ahora, um, también se puede usar el to. Acordemos que enough es como lo, lo justo o lo suficiente. To es demasiado. Es, es too small, en este caso, eh, eh, es como decir, demasiado pequeño. Y en este no afecta si es un noun o es un adjetivo. Si ven primero acá, too, y luego el adjetivo, small. Igual acá está con noun, too, much money, demasiado dinero. Entonces, ahí con el too, pues no importa, siempre va a ir después, ya sea... Si es adjetivo o noun, va a ir después del to. Eh, así es que ahí creo que solo es como tener claro que es to, es como decir demasiado. El as, as es like um, una comparación eh, igual, en igual degree. Es como decir tan conveniente como así. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Ok, aquí estamos diciendo que las casas no son tan convenientes como los apartamentos. Eh, si le agregamos el just, just, houses are just as convenient as apartments. En este caso, si sí estamos diciendo que es tanto como, ¿verdad? Son en igual grado, agregando el just. Ok. Y igual, pues aquí está en negativo, entonces estamos diciendo que no es tan como, pero en, en ambos casos estamos haciendo comparaciones. Si le agregamos el just, es como decir que están en, en igual grado, ¿verdad? Es tan conveniente como. Y con los nouns, es, acá tenemos algún par de ejemplos. Apartments have just as many rooms as houses. Siempre vamos a... a Utilizar en medio de la as y luego lo que estemos diciendo, ya sea noun o adjective. Y luego el otro, as and the complement. Entonces, no es siempre la misma estructura, no, 
No es como los, los el, el enough. Enough sí tiene que ver la posición del adjetivo o del noun. Si es adjetivo, recuerden, va antes de enough. Y si es noun, va después de enough. Ya con los demás, eh, eh, con los demás eh, comparativos o, o lo que tenemos acá, el to, que es para modificar nouns o adjectives, es para decir demasiado. Eh, o para hacer comparaciones con us y us es pues igual, no, no le afecta en el orden. Eh, eso solo lo quería explicar porque sí, ayer vi que hubieron, eh, hicieron un muy buen trabajo, pero faltaba un poquito más de explicación y práctica, que es lo que acabamos de hacer. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta respecto a ese tema del Grammar Focus para seguirlo practicando, porque vienen más ejercicios. ¿No questions? No, no, ok. En, igual, recuerden si de repente es como que no me quedó muy claro o porque no me salió el ejercicio, y más que encantada de volverlo a explicar, pregunten, eh, para mí es un, eh, para eso estamos. Um, so, we did this exercise, this is the last exercise that we did yesterday um, before finishing the class. Uh, we had to write the sentences in a different way and uh, we finished that one. So we're going to move to the next slide and it says write comparisons of the house in the apartments using these words. We're going to use us, us, and then compare with apartments. So remember, um, so you can say us, then adjective or noun, it doesn't matter, and then us, and the complement, the other thing that you are comparing. Um, if it is in the uh, same degree, you can add just, okay? Um, and we have these uh, adjectives or nouns that we can use in our sentences. Noisy, bedroom, bathroom, spacious, private, big, expensive, modern, convenient, and parking spaces. Using those adjectives and nouns, we're going to write comparison of the house and apartment. For example, we have uh, this light blue square with an example. It says the house isn't as noisy as the apartment. The apartment doesn't have as many bedrooms as the house. Okay. Um, so we're going to write comparison sentences using these words. And remember that we're not going to be using enough in this part of the section. Just we're going to be making comparison. Eh, ya dijimos que para hacer comparaciones las hacemos con us. Luego escribimos acá ya sea un noun or an adjective. Y luego as otra vez. Okay. Vamos a comparar casas y apartamentos utilizando lo que tenemos acá. Nouns and adjectives. I'll give you time. Eh, yo pienso que al menos unas cinco oraciones podemos escribir. Y luego me dejan saber cuando estén listos. I have a question. Uh, what's the meaning of uh, noisy? Uh, noisy es uh, ruidoso. Ok.
I'm finished. Okay, would you like to read your sentences? Yes. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, the house is as more spacious as the apartment. The house is as more... Um, the house as... is as more spacious as the apartment. Okay. Um, as is to make comparison. Yeah, I think it's not necessary to add more. Next sentence. Uh, the house usually aren't as modern as the apartment. Okay, that's good. Excellent. Continue. The apartments doesn't have as many parking spaces as the house. Excellent. Well done. The house isn't as expensive as the apartment. Mm -hmm. The apartments aren't as spacious as a house, says. Yes, excellent. So very well done. Thank you so much for sharing. Any other volunteer? If you haven't finished the five sentences, if you just have two, three, four, that's okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, okay. Uh, the apartment doesn't have as many space as the house. As much space? As much as much space uh -huh. as the house. Okay. Very good. And the apartment doesn't have uh, as much bathrooms as the house. As many? Ah, okay. Yeah, because remember <laughs> that many is for countable and much uncountable. I see. Los escribí al revés. <laughs> No worries. Pero ahorita that, corrijo. <laughs> that's the objective is to um to review and to reinforce. Great. Okay, and the last one, the house isn't as modern as the apartment. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing, Alexandra. Uh, anybody else? Any other volunteer? Me, teacher. Thank you, Martiel. The stadium is as a big as a national theater. Uh huh. My house is as spacious as the my parents' house. My car isn't as a modern as a my brother's. Car. Okay, you're uh -huh. the apartment doesn't have as many parking spaces as the mall. Mm, yes. It's correct. Yes, they are correct. Excellent okay, job. Only, only uh -huh. that you have only those. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Thank you so much for sharing, Magdiel. Um thank you too. Any other volunteer? No more volunteer? Me, teacher. Okay. Uh, my bike can run as fast as your house. Okay. Next sentence. Or only one? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, my mother. As all tall as my sister. <clears throat> okay, your brother is as old as your sister. Yes. Okay, very good. Do you have any other sentence or just two? Those two? No, no teacher. It's That's open. okay. That's fine. Very good job. Thank you so much. For sharing, Carla. Is there anybody else who wants to share and check? Nobody else?
Okay. Uh, so we are going to move to the um. The next part is a pronunciation. We have uh, some of the words that we've been uh, studying and some others that are not here. But uh, the thing here is to practice these words and with the unpronounced vowels. So um, the ones that you see that are crossed is they are not pronounced. Let me uh, share the audio with you so that we can practice together. Let's make this bigger. Okay. We're going to listen and you can practice at home with microphones off and uh, check here and pay attention that uh, the vowel that is immediately after a stressed syllable is sometimes not pronounced. Remember that the stress uh, is where um, decimos stress es donde está como la fuerza de voz. No, no hay acentos en inglés, pero sí hay una fuerza de voz a la cual se le llama estrés. Eh, las vocales que vienen después de una sílaba con estrés, eh, a mayoría de veces no se pronuncia esa vocal. Donde ven el puntito grande, eh, simboliza el estrés. Eh, donde tienen, por ejemplo, estas tres palabras que están acá, en esta línea, el estrés está en la primera sílaba. Average. Van a escuchar ahí, se escucha la fuerza. Average. Luego va como para abajo la, la, la fuerza. Average. And then, eh, este es igual. Y luego de la sílaba estresada, ven que la vocal que sigue no se pronuncia. Lo van a escuchar y pueden practicar en casa. Page 18, Exercise 4, Pronunciation Unpronounced Vowels Part A. Listen and Practice The vowel immediately after a stressed syllable is sometimes not pronounced. Average Different Separate Comfortable Interesting Vegetable. Page 18, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Unpronounced Vowels. Part A. Listen and practice. The vowel immediately after a stressed syllable is sometimes not pronounced. Average. Different. Separate. Comfortable. Interesting. Vegetable. Do you want to practice one more time? Please. Okay. Page 18, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Unpronounced Vowels Part A. Listen and practice. The vowel immediately after a stressed syllable is sometimes not pronounced. Average Different Separate Comfortable Interesting Vegetable Page 18, Exercise 4, Pronunciation Unpronounced Vowels Part A. Listen and practice. The vowel immediately after a stressed syllable is sometimes not pronounced. Average Different Separate Comfortable Interesting Vegetable. Okay, now for the next part of this um, pronunciation practice, we're going to write 
four sentences using some of the words that we have already practiced in part A. And then we're going to share and pay attention to unpronounced vowels. Um, you can use the previous topic that we were discussing in the grammar caucus. Um, for example, we can write, um, let's see, with comfortable. Uh, let me write a sentence is incomfortable. Okay, there you have one example. First, uh, nowadays apartments are as comfortable as houses. Okay. You can use average, different, separate, comfortable, interesting, and vegetable. At least two sentences because we have been writing in the previous exercise. And it's Friday. So the sentences are okay.
finish teacher okay daniel put here to read your sentences in my city the houses aren't as separate as town okay uh, my friend has separated to his girlfriend Okay, sorry to hear that. <laughs> no, it's only for a, a, a sentences. It's just to, to get one example using separate. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much for your sentences. Anybody else? Any other volunteer? Me, teacher. Thank you, Matthew. The house has many different. Um, other example, those books are separate of others. Okay. You did a very good job and also with the pronunciation, my dear. Very good. Thank you. Any other volunteer? Me, teacher. Thank you, Emerson. Uh, the average height of people is one meter seventy centimeters. Good example. Very good with pronunciation. Next example. Uh, there are different levels of English. Excellent. Um, the seats of my car are very comfortable. Excellent. And uh, the movie script looks interesting for young people. Great. Okay, okay. for sentences. Uh, do you have more? Only um, four. Well, another one could be, um, when I was young, I, I, don't, I don't like to, to eat vegetables. Oh, you didn't like? I didn't like to eat vegetables, yeah. Excellent. Very well done. You used different words and the pronunciation was very, very good. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Any other volunteer? Okay, no more volunteers. Then um, I'm going to stop sharing for a while and... Uh, we're going to check attendance for the first time tonight. Remember, say present when you hear your name. Let's start. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Alex Enrique Lemus. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Noemi Ramos. Elizabeth Stephanie Vasquez. Emerson Alexander Lopez. Present teacher. Thank you, Emerson. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Gertrudis Aymara Baquerano. Guadalupe Alexandra Calixto. Present. Thank you. Hazel Vanessa Mengiva. Jose Enrique Pineda Tobar. Present teacher. 
Yo. Yulisa y Amilet Villalta. Carla Ivania Anaya. Presente. Yo. Luis Javier Castillo. Matiel Esaú García. Presentes. Thank you. Manuel Alexander Vázquez. Present. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Mario Ernesto Ramírez. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra Martínez. Víctor Noé Bonilla. Present. Thank you. Vidal Byron Ruiz. Present teacher. Thank you. William Alexander Rosales. Okay, to continue with, um, we have a listening, and this is in the presentation, and I know if you didn't have the chance to print it, uh, you can work on your notebook, that's okay. Yes, let's see. The instructions, uh, we're going to listen to Brad describe a capsule hotel. We're going to check the words that best describe it. Um, I'll give you time for you to write the words and then you can check on your notebook. We have cramped, expensive, convenient, busy, bright, and dangerous. Tu paleta no te va a estar esperando por siempre. Are you ready? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay. Uh, so remember that you're going to check the words that describe the hotel. Okay. I'm going to play it once or twice. Okay. Just let me share it some with you. Okay. Here we go. Page 18, exercise 5. Listening. 
Capsule Hotels. Part A. Listen to Brad describe a capsule hotel. Check the words that best describe it. Welcome to the program. Your home is my home. Our guest tonight is Brad Phillips from California. Brad, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Well, at the moment, I'm working as an English teacher in Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo is an exciting city, but it's also very spread out. It can sometimes take hours to go from one part of the city to another. When I don't feel like going all the way home, I sometimes stay in a capsule hotel. A capsule hotel? Can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's a hotel with lots of small rooms. Actually, they're not really rooms. They're spaces that are two meters by one meter and only a meter high. In other words, they're very cramped. But the hotel is cheap and very convenient. And what's inside each little room, or should I say, each space? Well, inside every capsule, there's a bed, a TV. A TV? Really? Yeah, and a reading light, a radio, and an alarm clock. The hotel also has lockers where you can keep your personal belongings. Interesting. So, what kind of people stay in a capsule hotel? Well, probably people like me. People who miss the last train home or don't want to go all the way home only to turn around and come back to work again. It gets pretty busy, as you can imagine. Finally, would you recommend a capsule hotel to other people? Sure. The rooms are small, but you get used to sleeping in a small space. I just wouldn't recommend a capsule hotel to people who can't relax in small, cramped spaces. Do you want to listen one more time? Or yes, you get... please. Okay, okay not a problem. Page 18, exercise 5. Listening. Capsule Hotels. Part A. Listen to Brad describe a capsule hotel. Check the words that best describe it. Welcome to the program, Your Home is My Home. Our guest tonight is Brad Phillips from California. Brad, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Well, at the moment, I'm working as an English teacher in Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo is an exciting city, but it's also very spread out. It can sometimes take hours to go from one part of the city to another. When I don't feel like going all the way home, I sometimes stay in a capsule hotel. A capsule hotel? Can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's a hotel with lots of small rooms. Actually, they're not really rooms. They're spaces that are two meters by one meter and only a meter high. In other words, they're very cramped. But the hotel is cheap and very convenient. And what's inside each little room, or should I say, each space? Well, inside every capsule, there's a bed, a TV. A TV? Really? Yeah, and a reading light, a radio, and an alarm clock. The hotel also has lockers where you can keep your personal belongings. Interesting. So what kind of people stay in a capsule hotel? Well, probably people like me. People who miss the last train home or don't want to go all the way home only to turn around and come back to work again. It gets pretty busy, as you can imagine. Finally, would you recommend a capsule hotel to other people? Sure. The rooms are small, but you get used to sleeping in a small space. I just wouldn't recommend a capsule hotel to people who can't relax in small, cramped spaces. Done? Yes, maybe. I okay. think so. What did you check? Which words describe the capsule hotel? It's cramped. Is cramped. Convenient. Uh -huh. Convenient. Busy. Busy. And cheap. Uh-huh. 
And from the list, you mentioned craft, and also you mentioned convenient from this list. Yes. Any, uh -huh. Excellent. Anybody else? Or you have the same answers, cramped and convenient? Busy. And busy. Okay, busy too. Let's check. Yes, busy. Correct. Convenient. Correct. Cramped. Uh -huh. Excellent. Very well done with the listening, my dear. It's busy, convenient, and cramped are the words that describe the capsule hotel. Uh, other, now, other word that they use is cheap. Ah, it is cheap, yeah. So um, now the part B of this exercise is in addition to a bed, okay? It says that it has a bed. In addition to a bed, what does the hotel provide? What write four things. So we're going to listen again and write the four things that the hotel provides besides the bed. Ready with your notebooks? Yeah. Okay. Page 18, exercise five, part B. Listen again. In addition to a bed, what does the hotel provide? Write four things. Welcome to the program, Your Home is My Home. Our guest tonight is Brad Phillips from California. Brad, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Well, at the moment, I'm working as an English teacher in Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo is an exciting city, but it's also very spread out. It can sometimes take hours to go from one part of the city to another. When I don't feel like going all the way home, I sometimes stay in a capsule hotel. A capsule hotel? Can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's a hotel with lots of small rooms. Actually, they're not really rooms. They're spaces that are two meters by one meter and only a meter high. In other words, they're very cramped, but the hotel is cheap and very convenient. And what's inside each little room, or should I say, each space? Well, inside every capsule, there's a bed, a TV... A TV? Really? Yeah, and a reading light, a radio, and an alarm clock. The hotel also has lockers where you can keep your personal belongings. Interesting. So what kind of people stay in a capsule hotel? Well... Probably people like me. People who miss the last train home or don't want to go all the way home only to turn around and come back to work again. It gets pretty busy, as you can imagine. Finally, would you recommend a capsule hotel to other people? Sure. The rooms are small, but you get used to sleeping in a small space. I just wouldn't recommend a capsule hotel to people who can't relax in small, cramped spaces. Did you get the four things? Or you want to listen one more time? I got uh, two more things. But and one uh, more time, please, teacher. OK. Page 18, exercise 5, part B. Listen again. In addition to a bed, what does the hotel provide? Write four things. Welcome to the program, Your Home is My Home. Our guest tonight is Brad Phillips from California. Brad, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Well, at the moment, I'm working as an English teacher in Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo is an exciting city, but it's also very spread out. It can sometimes take hours to go from one part of the city to another. When I don't feel like going all the way home, I sometimes stay in a capsule hotel. A capsule hotel? Can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's a hotel with lots of small rooms. Actually, they're not really rooms. They're spaces that are two meters by one meter and only a meter high. 
In other words, they're very cramped. But the hotel is cheap and very convenient. And what's inside each little room, or should I say, each space? Well, inside every capsule, there's a bed, a TV. A TV? Really? Yeah, and a reading light, a radio, and an alarm clock. The hotel also has lockers where you can keep your personal belongings. Interesting. So, what kind of people stay in a capsule hotel? Well, probably people like me. People who miss the last train home or don't want to go all the way home only to turn around and come back to work again. It gets pretty busy, as you can imagine. Finally, would you recommend a capsule hotel to other people? Sure. The rooms are small, but you get used to sleeping in a small space. I just wouldn't recommend a capsule hotel to people who can't relax in small, cramped spaces. All right.、Um, what are the four things that you get? TV. A TV. Okay. Locket, radio. Locket, radio. Mm -hmm. Long, long clock. Alarm clock. Yes, there are four. Yes. Excellent job. Um. Does anybody have something different? Or you have the same answers as Magdiel? I had a, a a reading light. Yes. Also, they mentioned a reading light. Yes. So it says it is mentioned here. Excellent job, Emerson. Um, and Magdiel, thank you so much for sharing. The hotel provides a TV, as you can see here, a reading light, a radio, an alarm clock, and lockers. Great. Now,、uh, the question is: Would you like to stay in a capsule hotel? Why or why not? In my case, I wouldn't like to be in a capsule hotel because um. I I am not good at uh, uh I I don't handle very well just being in small or cramped spaces, so no, <laughs> that is not 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 for me. What about you? Would you like to stay in a capsule hotel? Volunteer. Well. Being myself,、uh, pro probably I will stay only for three days. But first time, the curiosity, right? But I think、uh, if I stay there by three days, maybe I, I didn't want to be there much time. <laughs> okay, just for to get the experience by by yourself, and yes, three days. I think it's it's okay. <laughs> but more time in a space like to cramp is is not healthy. But yeah, that's good. Thank you so much for your opinion. Um, now, next exercise is writing a descriptive email. We have one example here. Uh, let me move this. The hi. Okay. Here we have. Uh, descriptive email. Imagine you've just moved to this apartment. Here you have the the apartment and this and the right side of the screen. Write an email to a friend comparing your old home to your new one. And we have one example here. Uh, who wants to read this email? Dear Emma, volunteer to read. Thank you, Alexandra. Dear Emma, how are things with you? My big news is that I just moved to a new apartment. Do you remember my old apartment? It didn't have an hour of space. My new apartment has a huge living room and two bathrooms. Also, my old living room was too dark, but my new one is brighter. 
but there aren't enough windows in the bedrooms. So they're too dark. There are. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for reading. Now, um, in the next part is the reading. You have to write, imagining that you just moved to the apartment that you have here in the right hand side of the screen. Okay, you just move here. You have to write an email similar to this one to your friend, comparing your old home to your new home. Okay, as you can see here, it has kitchen, it has two bathroom, two bedroom, a living room and a closet. Okay. I see that there are uh, four windows um, or five, five windows. So I think it's okay. Now, um, do you have any question with this exercise? As you can see here in the example, it's uh, they are using um, the previous vocabulary that we studied, there isn't enough. Um, then they are making comparisons as well. You will have uh, like five minutes to write your email and then we're going to share.
Okay, ready? Are you ready? Or you need more time? Yeah, ready to share. Thank you, Emerson. Would you like to share? Would you like to share your email? Let me try because I typed in the in the computer. Okay. I don't know if you can you can see it. Yes. Okay. Wow. So you are. Uh, you're working on the computer, but at the meeting you have it in your cell phone. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, you can read your email. Okay. You? Yeah. Well, okay, it says, uh, "Dear Emma, hope you are doing well. I have big news. Finally moved to a new apartment. 
it has an average size. It has one big living room and two bedrooms. Also has two bathrooms, but the kitchen is small. Only one of the bedrooms has a closet. At least there are enough windows. Fantastic. You did it excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. Great job. Okay. Is there any other volunteer to share? Okay, if there are no more volunteers, we're going to continue. Let me do a new share. Okay, uh, for the next exercise, we have to write the opposite um, and use the word here that we have in this box. Uh, so we have uh, convenient here in this, in number one, we have convenient. The opposite from the box is inconvenient. Now, um, we can do it verbally and then you can do it in your notebook if you want. Um, number two, cramped. What is the opposite of cramped? Look here in the box. We have dark, expensive, noisy, old, safe, small, spacious. Spacious. Excellent, Alexandra. That is the opposite cramp. Opposite, spacious. Number three, dangerous. Safe. Dangerous, uh, yes, safe. Excellent. Big. Small. Small, excellent, thank you, Jose. Uh, bright. Bright. Dark. Excellent, that would be dark. Modern. Old. Excellent, Sonia, thank you. All quiet. Noisy. Very good, Carla, noisy. And cheap? Expensive. Expensive. Right. Thank you so much, Carla. So yes, so we have the um we have completed the first part in A. Now let's move to part B. We're going to rewrite the sentences, finding another way to say each sentence using not enough or two and the words in part A. Uh, for example, here it says the house is too expensive. Okay. Aquí tengo la oración diciendo que la casa es demasiado cara. Entonces, otra forma de decirlo sería que no es suficientemente barata. Uh, the house isn't cheap enough. Entonces, como uh, para eso vamos a utilizar los opuestos. Y pues um, vamos a estar utilizando not enough y to para formar las oraciones. So, es decir, lo mismo, pero en una forma diferente. Um, vamos a hacer un ejemplo más. Eh, number two. The rooms aren't bright enough. Si digo que no son lo suficientemente uh, iluminados o brillantes, no son suficientemente brillantes. Otra forma de decirlo podría ser que son demasiado oscuros. ¿Cómo quedaría? The rooms. The rooms are too dark. Excellent, Alexandra. The rooms are too dark. Okay. You have uh, four more sentences. No, six more sentences. Ya hicimos las primeras dos. Quedan seis más para que las hagan en su 
eh, cuaderno y lo compartimos whenever you're ready, just let me know. Finish teacher. Okay, Daniel, would you like to share the number three? Yes, uh, the living room is too spacious for the fam family. Uh, the living room is too spacious for the family. It's too small. It's too small. Uh huh. Sería, it's too small, porque ahí nos dice que no es suficientemente espacioso para la familia. So, it's the living room is too small for the family. Good try. Thank you so much. Uh, number four. Volunteer uh, for number four. The bathroom is too old. The bathroom isn't modern. The bathroom isn't modern enough. Podemos poner agregar enough. Good job. The bathroom okay. isn't modern enough. Very good. 
Thank you so much. Number five, a volunteer. The yard is too small for our pets. Mm, that's good, excellent. The yard is too small for our pets. Uh-huh, excellent. Uh, volunteer for number six. The street is enough quiet for us. Um, uh, yes, but it's it negative, right? Uh, the, the street isn't enough quiet for us. Excellent. That's it. Number seven. The neighborhood is too dangerous. Volunteer for number seven. The neighborhood is too dangerous. The neighborhood isn't safe enough. Excellent. The neighborhood isn't safe enough. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, number eight, the location isn't convenient enough. The location is too inconvenient. The location is too inconvenient. Very good, Jose. Thank you so much, everybody, for your participation. Now, let's see what do we have next. All right. Get them out and clear. Also. Okay. And here we have. A uh, short grammar review at the word enough to these sentences. And here we have like a kind of review. Um, it says um, enough comes after adjectives, but before nouns. Es lo que estamos hablando al principio, ¿verdad? Que si es un, un adjetivo, entonces eh, eh, iría después del adjetivo, enough. Si es un noun, entonces enough va antes y luego se escribe el noun. Entonces uh, tenemos un ejercicio acá en donde tenemos que poner enough en el lugar apropiado. So we have the apartment isn't comfortable. Sabemos que comfortable es un adjective. Entonces eh, luego iría enough. The apartment isn't comfortable enough. Ahora, there aren't bedrooms. Bedrooms es un noun. ¿A dónde pondríamos el enough? ¿Sería antes de bedrooms o después? Antes. Ajá. Uh -huh. That is correct. Uh, there aren't. Aquí nos quedaría enough bedrooms. There aren't enough bedrooms. Okay, ya tenemos el número uno como ejemplo, ya hicimos el número dos. So you can continue with the rest of them. You can use your notebooks. And let me know when ready to share uh, your work and check it.
فهميشت Finish teacher. Okay. What do you have in number three? It is not modern enough. Excellent. It's not modern enough. Um, a volunteer for number four. Parking spaces, number four. There aren't. There aren't enough parking space. Very good, Jose. Thank you so much. That there aren't enough parking spaces. Uh, number five. Number five, the neighborhood. The neighborhood doesn't have enough street lights. Excellent. That's correct, Emerson. Um, volunteer for number six. Volunteer for number six. There aren't enough closets. Thank you, Martial. That's correct. There aren't enough closets. Number seven. Volunteer for number seven. It is not private enough. Okay, excellent. It is not private enough. Thank you so much. And the last one, the living room. Number eight. 
Number eight, the living room. The living room isn't spacious enough. Uh huh. The living room isn't spacious enough. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your answers. They were correct. Now, uh, let's uh, continue moving from next slide. Let's see. Okay, uh, the last part is a conversation. We're going to use the words given here in the box. Um, the comparisons, some of the comparisons can be used more than once. Okay, we have almost as and as. So this is uh, just for comparison, okay? And uh, it says we're going to be completing with those words or expression in the box to make the comparison. And you can use them more than once. Uh, for example, how did you like the house on 12th Street? And it says, well, it's not as convenient as the apartment. We have the word to use the word convenient. Well, it's not as convenient as the apartment on Main Street. And then it says, that's true. The house is less convenient. And the apartment doesn't have, and it says, the house and rooms. What do you think you can complete that? Any idea? It could be, uh, and the apartment doesn't have as many rooms as the house. Excellent, that's correct. Thank you so much. So, and the apartment doesn't have as many rooms as the house. And then they say, yes, the house is more spacious. But I think there are, and they have closets in the apartment.
could be, but I think there are just as many closets as in apartment. Mm -hmm. It says yes, and the house is more spacious, but I think there are just as many closets as in the apartment. Yes, or it can be not as or in the apartment. Yes, uh huh. Yes, I think that that can be a good option. And we could also say that there are not as many closets as in the apartment, on, yeah, but the house is more spacious. And this is a contrast idea, right? Eh, la, la siguiente es como un contraste. Dice yo, sí, la casa es más espaciosa, pero uh, I think there are not as many closets is, as in the apartment podría ser, pero creo que no hay tantos closets como el apartamento al ser como una idea contrastante ¿verdad? por el but, pero uh -huh. yeah, that could be another option thank you so much and the next part that says you're right the ah, pero dice que es el mismo Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. The closest space is the same. So, yes, I think that's the, the best option, the one that you said. Mm -hmm. And the wallpaper in the apartment is uh, the wallpaper in the house. And we have shabby. Do you remember the meaning of shabby? Like uh, desorganizado. Ajá, Xavi es como um, uh, en mal estado, andrajoso, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. The wallpaper in the apartment is, and ahí tenemos que usar Xavi and comparado con el de la casa, the wallpaper in the house. What do you think is a good option to complete there? Any idea on how to complete that phrase? Not as shabby can be. Mm. That can be, podría ser not as shabby as the wallpaper in the house. Or podría ser um, almost, también podría ser otra opción, almost as shabby as, también podría ser. So I think that, let me check. Okay, unfortunately, um, we're not going to be able to finish this exercise for today. So we're going to continue that on Monday. Remember to work on the platform. You should have finished section one and uh, section two, if it's possible. So uh, for now, it is time to go to sleep or maybe watch TV for Larry or relax, and then see you on Monday. Okay, see you on Monday. Thanks. Take care. Good luck, teacher. See you on Monday. Enjoy. See you Monday. See you. Good night. Good night.